Yes, people. Another great day. MySubstation.com. Chad Money. I got uh, this pile of greatness right here. Keith Hughes. Hip Hughes. I don't even know if I can give you guys that. Anyway. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Sir. Very nice to be here. It's so good to see you. Yes. And, uh, to see you doing great things. I remember you from many years ago in the classroom. Uh, <laughs> so how's uh how, how's everything with you? You know what's uh what's going on? What uh, what, what brings you about here today? Other than me begging you to come on the show? <laughs> well, you didn't beg me. You just asked me. I would I would have done it no matter what because uh, because I was considered to be a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, but I've been at McKinley now for 15 years. Uh, I adjunct to the University of Buffalo. I teach teachers to uh, teach hopefully. Right. Um, and I have a gig on YouTube. Uh, which has been growing pretty steadily and trying to teach the masses and make a little money while I'm doing that. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Um, and uh, doing a little work for the History Channel. So um, things have been, do been doing well. I enjoy my job immensely. I like teaching. Mm -hmm. So, what's the, uh, what, what's the YouTube channel? Where can they uh, check you out directly? Um, if you just Google Hip Hughes, okay. it'll go right to the YouTube. Or if you just Google Hip Hughes in YouTube, it'll go right there. Gotcha. Uh, but that's the station. It's the Hip Hughes station at YouTube. Uh, we have uh, over 300 instructional videos, current event videos, world history, uh, United States history, a lot of political science. So if you're interested in what's going on in the world today, uh, we can definitely hit you up with some of the knowledge. Gotcha. What, uh, what, what made you get involved or at least take, take that route? Uh, I don't make enough money. <laughs> no, uh, I actually, um, I think that, can I ask when, when I taught you what year? Uh, this was uh, 2000, 2001, and oh, 2001, 2002. That's, 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 that's <laughs> early on in the, uh, in the history yeah. of uh, my, my experiences. Yeah. Um, so I definitely remember doing video with you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I think that might have been the year of uh, the, the the Wings of Hope. Video. And yeah. if you don't yeah. know, yeah. that's become legendary in video and education. Mm -hmm. It's been in books. Um, urban education with an attitude. Um, it's been discussed at the graduate level. People have written dissertations that have included it. Um, and I, I think that it, it, it's a really awesome video. You can see that Wings of Hope if you type that into YouTube. Um, yeah, but it, that, it taught me, you know what, Chad? It taught me the power of video. Yes. It, it taught me the power that it gave kids. Mm -hmm. That when kids touched the camera and kids recorded something, that there was a certain ownership mm -hmm. that um, I think doesn't exist in, in a lot of educational right. experiences. Right. Um, so I began uh, not only continuing to use video with kids, and I've developed that into a craft, uh, kids making movie trailers about the Civil War, yes. or making PSAs about social justice, or there's so many avenues of, of composition um, and uh, meaning making in video that I, I can't avoid that. But then I also said, well, I, I don't have enough time now to lecture all the time. I can't tell these stories to my kids that they need to know. So I started filming my lectures. Um, it's 2007. Okay. Um, I started the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and um, now I have 300 plus videos. Right. So it just kind of developed into its own thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, how uh, I, I don't want to say like rewarding, but what's the you know what's the feeling you get? When, when a non-student or someone that you know that you just that you don't deal with on everyday you know on everyday basis and they might see you anywhere you know at at a Tim Hortons or maybe coming out of school or you be and they say you're the guy from or I saw you and you know my brother and my how, how often does that happen and you know how how does I, I mean I don't really want to say like how, how does that make you feel no. and just knowing that your 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 reach is actually reaching. Um, yeah, well, I think it's 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 the same for anybody, you know, whether you're a police officer or a hip hop artist or you're um, an actor. I think if anybody acknowledges right. the work that you're doing, that I think it's human instinct. It feels good. Right. I don't think it's our driving motivation all the time. I think it probably partly is. I, I took a psychology <laughs> class in college, <laughs> but um, um, but but it's nice to know that the work you do matters. I think that's true for every walk of life. And, yeah. Now with the uh, with the school system, with schools, with uh, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> with, uh, with with what's going on in school, do you do you see that uh, it's it's a lot easier to have the, the interactions and I guess the, the more honest feedback through the YouTube or you know is it still the the hands on in the classroom? You know, they, they come to Mr. Hughes, I don't understand this, or, you know, you actually, you, you take a liking to, to, to a kid, not in that sense. 
Um, you, you Hashtag take, creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, you you take a liking to to a kid, you know, based off of, of their personality or just knowing them a little bit more and seeing them every day. You know, do do you get that your message maybe gets across a little bit better and is more honest through the through the YouTube interactions, or you know, is it still through the classroom that 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 for my kids and my students themselves? I think it's it, the personal is always more powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, obviously, I mean, they're watching my videos because it's embedded in the lessons now. Mm -hmm. They have to for homework and such. Um, but I think to them, it's more of a novelty. You know, it's Mr. Hughes. He's online. Right. Big right. deal. Right. Um, power is always in relationships. So I think right. it's that everyday joke, everyday connection that's probably more powerful. Um, yeah, most definitely. Um, I definitely have strong feelings about learning and, and, and reforms and things that are going on that might interfere with that, that authenticity and gotcha. that, that engagement we're looking for. But um, in terms of the YouTube channel, uh, you know, it is what it is. It helps me out financially a little bit. It gotcha. teaches kids some things. Mm -hmm. um, but that ain't teaching. Right. No. That's, right. That's talent. That's rare. The difference. <laughs> Yeah. Not teaching them to tell them. What's the other, if we didn't already plug it, what's the, other, what's the YouTube link where can they directly subscribe? Uh, yeah, just uh, youtube.com slash hip hughes. Okay. Uh, just type in hip hughes in the Google, it'll take you there. And uh, you might even, you can win a free pony. Hey. Okay. You want a free pony? Do you want a free pony? Who doesn't want a free pony? Hello. Subscribe and listen to the language. <laughs> you may be eligible to win. <laughs> No, I mean, if you subscribe, you know, you just get updates on videos and, uh, you know, we're keeping you in the loop what's going on in Ukraine over in, you know, in Eastern Europe and um, I have videos on everything from Amanda Knox to Supreme Court cases, gotcha. money and politics, we could go on forever. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the, uh, what's, what's, what's the driving force, uh, you know, just behind what you do every day? I mean, more so than, than being a teacher, you know, more so than, than your love for seeing children do better, you know, when you wake up and you know that I, I have my day to get through you know what what motivates you to keep doing you know, what you're doing and a better job and helping more than you did the day before yeah because life would suck if you didn't have that yeah. <laughs> so what are you gonna do i think you know really i mean philosophy 101 whatever you're doing in this world you gotta do it mm -hmm. um and 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 hopefully think that there's a there's a larger uh you know reason for it being sure. and to uh, enjoy the experiences and because what else are you going to do? you going to sock? Right. <laughs> do you, what do you want, a sock? <laughs> no, and I think that, you know, but seriously, I think that when you when you carry that kind of attitude, then mm -hmm. it rubs off on other people, mm -hmm. and that like breeds like. And, yes. Um, exactly. oh, yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if I suck, they're going to suck. If they're going to suck, I'm going to suck more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terrible slippery slope, folks. <laughs> Got you. How is, uh, how, how is Buffalo to you? What, you know, I hear a lot of uh, just... From five year olds to five year olds, I don't know it's five year olds. You know, <laughs> and uh, Noah. Yeah. <laughs> how does that? You know, how 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 is how, what what is Buffalo to you? You know, how does how does Buffalo treat you? How do you treat Buffalo? And you know the 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 bad rap that we get. You know, what what, what is it through your eyes? Um, well, I'm not a homegrown. I mean, I you know I moved. I've been here you know since 1990. I come right. from downstate, um, like Westchester and Putnam and stuff right. like that. Okay. But Buff, you know, Buffalo has always been very real. Um, you know, I think that it's a great cassette of life. That there's, you know, different characters from, from all kinds of economic stratospheres. And I think definitely teaching at McKinley has given me, um, you know, a unique ability to see through different eyes um, and to broaden my own way of thinking. Um, so, you know, if people don't like Buffalo, they suck. Because we don't. We don't suck. Come to Buffalo, because we don't <laughs> suck. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've heard the bad raps, but... I, I don't know. I, I do think that, there, there, that that I try to find the goodness in everyone that I meet. It's easier said than done, especially right. you know, when you're a white guy. <laughs> <laughs> when you're the white guy. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but seriously, that that, that uh, uh, you know, you try to see the goodness. Got you. Got you. Now, um, anything that you just uh, just want to open up about, you know, for yours? Anything that you uh, just want to? I want to talk about educational reform. Oh yeah. I do. Okay. I really do. <laughs> um, I really am worried about the direction that education has been going in, let's say, the last five, six, seven years. Um, and I think that um, people out there need to realize what's occurring inside the school system. You guys. You guys right there. Uh, because I think there's a lot of misinformation and I think there's a lot of money um, that's behind the shaping of public opinion. To be honest with you, I don't want to be like, you know, Illuminati! Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but really, uh, 
So, so can I just go into my diet try? Go, go, <laughs> yes. Um, so if you don't know about Common Core, mm -hmm. Common Core is this kind of new skill-based standards, you know, the difference between knowing and doing. Right. And I'm actually for doing. I think it's great that we concentrate on kids doing things. Mm -hmm. But there's this whole list. You wouldn't believe the list. It's really long. Right. And it's very, very uh, micromanaging. Okay. So it'll say, by second grade, a student needs to be able to read seven paragraphs write three sentences, use these many grammatical words. Really, it really is really, you know, kind of micromanaging. And the philosophy has been that the United States is behind, mm -hmm. that the, the world is here and we're here because we suck, mm -hmm. and teachers suck. So we need to put our hands on teachers and push them in the standards so kids will go forward. Mm -hmm. You listen to the language, college and career readiness, mm -hmm. race for the top, because you don't want to be on the bottom. Um, kind of all of these, these little phraseologies that make us think mm -hmm. that you know there are mechanisms that could be put in place right. from up here right. that would trickle down, mm -hmm. that would expand education um, greatness. Trickle and down. right, it's opposite. Yeah. It's not, the only thing that rolls downhill is shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> this is the conspiratorial part, and mm -hmm. I, I hope that you know it is what it is. Uh, the Common Core, everyone is told, was developed by teachers. That is not true. Yes. Some hand-picked teachers, it is true. It was originated um, really from the Gates Foundation, okay. Bill Gates, yes. Walmart Foundation, mm. uh, Michelle Ree and Students First, which mm. is a huge pro-charter, for-profit mm. kind of organization out there, um, as well as uh, the chief architects, not even being teachers. Um, and I think that the idea from the, the conspiratorial idea was the business community really wanted a certain worker you know, a certain mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I, I don't think we're zombie-eye-fying children and they're all going to be like Obama drones right. like some people claim. But I do think that the idea that if we could just get kids to think a certain way and act a certain way and do things a certain way, that they could compete with the world and we would make uh, better toilet paper. Right. <laughs> Softer toilet paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's as far as I'll take the conspiracy. I mean, I think there's money connections, and if you look into Pearson and the uh, kind of corporate textbook and you know, uh, educational material, there's a lot of money going on in there. But at the end of the day, all you need to know is that there's been, um, there's been a, a dilution of power from teachers. Right. That the teaching profession, because I went to schools, I did the learning yeah. to do the teaching. <laughs> um, I have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. I feel that I'm a professional, no different than a lawyer or a doctor. Certainly. So ha being a doctor and having a fireman come in and say, you're cutting wrong, um, is stupid. Yes. Stupid. Right. Um, so I have, a, I have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time with people telling me how to do my job. I want to be accountable, but part of the process of making teachers accountable is now. Can I tell you the funny thing? <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is what we used to do. I used to teach. Yeah. I was a teacher. Okay. I'd go in, and Chad can be my testimony here that I did my job with passion. Oh, yeah. And that every day you learn something, mm -hmm. right? I thought I did pretty good. Still my favorite teacher. Thank you very much. Let's pay you $5. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, to get that good YouTube money. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have it on here. So, so now, in order for them to know I'm a good teacher, uh -huh. because they can't just like look and go, well, Hughes is a good teacher. They gotta know. So we datify things. Everything's got to be like based on numbers. Mm -hmm. Just in the most terrible idea. You know, I want to look at doctors. If he killed 100 people, I wouldn't go. But the way they do it is I have to write an SLO. It's called a student learning objective. In the beginning of the year, I have to look at every kid I have and decide how well I can get him to do on the state exam. So I'll look at Shay and I'll go, uh, <laughs> 68, yeah. whatever, yeah, 79, 99, 110, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I have to back you up with five data pieces. Oh shit, I really do. So I have to look at Chad's eighth grade math scores, his global scores, maybe his English scores from second grade, um, his attendance rate. I have to come up with numbers and put them in a box mm -hmm. to justify the number that you got. If you get that number at the end of the year, I'm a pretty good teacher. I was going to say, you get a bonus. But if, no, no, I'm just good. But if you don't, right. then I can be labeled ineffective. And here's the problem. 
if you teach somewhere where this, maybe the students are there every day, maybe the student, the student could be sitting on his head and get a 93 because his parents could get him a tutor or something like that, that teacher's going to be affected, even if that teacher does crack cocaine every day mm -hmm. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. But I could teach my heart out, and if Chad decides he wants to do that and not come to school, right. it doesn't matter. I still get graded on your effective mm -hmm. grade at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And just think about the bureaucracy. How long it takes me to get five numbers for 140 kids. Right, right, right. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but the last column I used the 1978 New York Yankees RBI. Yes. <laughs> Reggie Jackson. Reggie. Mr. Acto. Uh, but I, I, I do think it's stifling. Mm -hmm. um, teacher morale has never been lower. Mm -hmm. and this is across mm -hmm. the spectrum. Right. Teachers are hating their jobs and unhappy teachers because it's truth. unhappy kids. It's oh, true. You see it all you the time. see it all over. You ask a teacher and they'll all tell you they're all tired and angry I don't get paid and apathetic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because we were working pretty hard before that this railroad got in the way. Mm -hmm. So working around it, you know, a lot of people are quitting, a lot of people are leaving the profession. And uh, that's actually good for the schools because then they get to hire young, inexperienced people that are more willing to listen that are a lot cheaper. Right. I've been, I've, we're just having this conversation um, actually over in, in the music world. What happens is, you know, you're, you're working for somebody and, you know, you, you've been under that person for so long and their assistant that they've been feeding crumbs to or their intern, you know, they're, they're just underneath it. They're learning everything that you know. So sooner or later, you become expendable. And you could pay the intern twice as much as what they were making, which is still half of what that's the right. person in front of them. That's right. right. That's right. You know? There was a story the other day, even from Silicon Valley, that all of the tech giants, like hey, Google, AT&T, and Yahoo, have basically done a secret pact mm -hmm. that, look, we're not going to pay these high-level managers right. $18 million anymore because that hurts our, our stock and our bottom line. So nobody do that because if everybody keeps the numbers in line, mm -hmm. we can drive those salaries down. Mm -hmm. And look at, you see, you mentioned interns, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How many companies are using free college right. interns that used to be high-paying or middle-class jobs that are now gone? Um, and, and I can't even imagine being a, a full-time intern at a huge corporation. Right. I can't, I mean, that was something. I mean, no, you're doing a job people used to get paid sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 more, you know, and you still go to school. And you're doing it for free? We're doing, you're for free. doing it for free for just a couple credits. That's right. And then they're getting their fingers crossed that they'll, you know, be able to get, you know, that job. That job, right. That's right. Where the same thing will happen to them in five years. Now, let me ask you, you know, uh, you know, growing up, I know we used to hear a lot of uh, go to school, get good grades, get a good job. Nowadays, that's not what the kids are listening kids are listening to Chief Keith. The kids are listening to WWE on Mondays. You know, the kids are listening to Love and Hip Hop. You know, do, do you see that? I, I don't really want to say like sell that dream, but do, do you see that it's harder now to get the kids to believe in that point of view? I don't even know if I can get them to believe it because I don't know if I believe it. Like, I, I mean, seriously, you can be the best of student. Mm -hmm. You can go to a great university like UB or Canisius Buff State, wherever, you're in your community. You can get a degree, you can do all the right things, and then you still can be on the bottom of the top of the totem pole for your whole life. You can still be working 40, 50 hours, making $35,000 a year, worrying about the water getting shut off. And the American dream for you is really like you know lower middle class, right. even with that education <laughs> and that thing. So I don't know, and I think that the only thing I could sell to a kid is what's your other option other than arming yourself mm -hmm. with that with that kind of um, experience, mm -hmm. so you have a chance to make a better life for yourself, and it might not have to be through the the, the traditional way. You might have to build it yourself. You might have to start a business, or you might have to be an innovator, or you might have to. But I think that waiting for the American dream, like the Rockefeller, I mean, like the you know the old, you know the pictures of the fifties, mm -hmm. the people eating dinner together, right, like right. Rockwell. Like I, I don't think that that America exists right now. Um, my father was a high school dropout, mm -hmm. God rest his soul, and uh, he had a job in a lumberyard when he was like 17, 18 years old. Became a teamster. It's in the union. Shout out to the uh, yeah, shout out to the teamsters, or we'll bury your ass. <laughs> um, swimming with the fishies. Yeah. Uh, and you know he was making you know middle class salary that allowed me and my family mm -hmm. to 
go to college, to afford to, to have that type of life. And I think that today he'd be working at Home Depot right. and he probably would have shitty insurance and I would probably not be able to afford to go to school and I'd be living in a van. And everybody would be hating everybody because of it. That's right, I'd be living in a van down by the side of the river. Not good. Not good. Not good <laughs> That's a Chris Farley joke, so I just that one. <laughs> now, uh, with, I, I don't want to say like a, like, like a plan for the future, but you know, with, with, with what you're doing, you know, just with, with how you feel, yeah. you know, what, what is the, I, I, I guess like the, uh, you know, the, the, the ultimate legacy, you know, what, what will it be that you were able to say, you know, you, you, you brought and you helped? Well, I mean, that's, a kind of, that's kind of a hard question for anyone to answer because Got an ego, you got an ego, everyone's got an ego, but I don't like really talk about myself. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. uh, but my videos aren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know that, you know, other than my family and the children that I love and my experiences with, with them, which is most important, mm -hmm. um, secondary to that is I will I will leave this, this knowledge piece behind. And hopefully if you watch my videos, you get a little bit of a laugh and a sense of humor and a joke here and there. And, uh, it can be a pleasurable experience, and if I can teach a kid that learning doesn't have to suck, right. because somehow schools took mm -hmm. the art of learning, which is like built into our DNA, and made it suck, mm -hmm. which is pretty hard to imagine, um, then that's probably a, a, a pretty cool thing. Right. I think that. I always think that. Now, uh, I was talking to you off camera about you know me wanting to get involved in having my own school or having my own series of schools. French horses. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, do, do, you, do you think that maybe uh, that might be the, the first step? Is to, if they're not going to allow you to change the curriculum or change the agenda, per se, you know, can, can a group of people, you know, a group of good people band together? And you know, I guess with the proper support or funding right. or backing, have their own school and school system. I've never been a dream killer, mm -hmm. so I mean, my my, my idealistic side mm -hmm. says go for it. Of course, you should fight for what you believe in. You should do what you're meant to do. Mm -hmm. And then that other shoulder, the little red guy, the right. devil guy, is like that's cray cray. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. They're gonna crush you. Right. <laughs> um, we were talking about this, and I mentioned, you know. I even thought the school of awesome, like starting my own school, mm -hmm. the bureaucracy and the money and the politics, and um, I think that would be a rough go. I think someone with your personality and drive probably would be the kind of guy to weather the storm. Mm -hmm. uh, I, on the other hand, have turned um, to try to change the system from within. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a virus in the machine. Um, so we started a group. Mm -hmm. Why well, started a group? Yes, yes. I started. A, um, <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't start it, but I'm admin for a group called the Badass Teachers Association. Gotcha. We're on Facebook, a closed group. We're going to march in Washington this June, mm -hmm. and we're trying to, uh, we're 45,000 strong pretty much, and uh, we're trying to find teachers that are passionate and that want to reclaim our, our, our profession. Um, one of our slogans is we want to raise our teacher voice. Mm -hmm. We want to have a power in our profession. No different than a doctor wants power in the room of surgery, or if you're an artist like you or your friends, that you have that power in front of the microphone. Mm -hmm. You don't want someone telling you what to do. Now, how did you get involved with that, or how did that begin? Yeah, that's actually Mark Neeson and a couple guys. Well, he's from uh, Fordham University, but there's a lady from Oklahoma. And it's all over the country. We're in all 50 states. And uh, I'm a pretty big mouth on Facebook about education mm -hmm. crap, so uh, they asked me to be admin. I do a lot of their memes kind of their uh, gotcha. you know, poster stuff online. Mm -hmm. Made some videos for them to recruit and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I feel I'm doing my part. I feel like I'm not just going to sit passively on the bus as it, you know, right. heads into the caverns of hell. Now, do you uh, do, do you see yourself, I guess, being like a, as corny and cheesy as it sounds, <laughs> uh, do, do you see yourself being like a, a, a champion for change? Because at, 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 at present, yeah. you know, I, 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 I I don't know. I mean, I have a family, and I have to make money, yes. and I have to do that kind of thing. So as nice as it sounds, being Gandhi, Gandhi died pretty poor. Right. right, right, right. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm a terrible capitalist. <laughs> but um, 
You know, I, I, I think that I'm going to do what, what I'm enjoying right now and see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be on a show hopefully coming out in June on H2. Right, right. Uh, right. History right. 2. Yeah, um, H2 is History Channel's sister network. So um, I made a pilot last year with Mark Hall Patton. Okay. Uh, he's from Pawn Stars. Yes. He's yes. a guy with a beard. <laughs> the beard of knowledge, they right. call him. So uh, we actually cut a, a sizzler out in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Uh, we filmed a show at the Hoover Dam, and it was a museum rescue show. Um, and the Sizzler didn't get picked up, so we were a little disappointed about museum that. Rescue but show. yeah, it was a museum rescue show. It was going to be like a Pawn Star spinoff, gotcha. and they were going to bring the guys from Pawn Stars in sometimes. Mm -hmm. We drove in uh, that big purple car, the okay. uh, purple yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the car we drove around Las Vegas and it broke down. <laughs> but uh, that that brought me into that world. <laughs> So uh, they invited me back, um, and I'm going to be on a show called The Hunt for History. We have a show coming out in June on guns. There's one on mafia history, uh, one on engineering feats, and there's one on badass presidents. Gotcha. So badass presidents. Badass presidents. Who's the, the, the There's a couple of funny stories. Do you got time for a story? Badass president. Yeah. Okay. There's, okay. Let's see. What's the best one? Um, okay. Teddy Roosevelt's the best one. Mm -hmm. So in 1912, Teddy Roosevelt had served his second term, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sorry, in 1908. So he went to Africa to like, kill shit or something. And then he got pissed at his vice president, Taft, mm -hmm. because he thought Taft was selling out the progressive dream to big business. Mm -hmm. So he came back pissed. You ready for my joke? Pissed is a bull moose. And that's where that bull moose party comes from, that third party. So here's the story. In 1912, he's campaigning in Milwaukee. Right? You know the story? No, no, no. Right, 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 right. right. So, right, he's, been, he's campaigning in Milwaukee. He's getting ready for the speech, like in the back of the, you know, the, the stadium or the room or whatever, and a guy comes up and shoots him in the chest. He got an assassination attempt. Mm -hmm. The bullet went through the speech in his pocket, right. dinged off his glasses case, and went into his chest cavity. He then proceeded to give a 90-minute speech with a bullet in his chest. I think that's pretty bad. Why is he still president? I, it, that's pretty badass. If you Google it, go Google. Right. You ready for this? Google Teddy Roosevelt's bullet. Right. And you can look and you can see the speech with a big ass hole through it like that. And the chest x ray. That was a pretty good story. <laughs> you know, Abraham Lincoln was a wrestler? No. Yes, he was. I mean, he was but you know what, though? He, I mean, he, to me, he always did look like the Undertaker. So, you know, <laughs> he threw it down. I guess that kind of works. Yeah. That's nuts. That's all the way nuts. Now, uh, I definitely wanted to ask, where does the, or where did the love of history first come from? You know, because, I mean, you could definitely tell that this isn't something that you just stumbled upon. Um, I don't know. I think my, my father was a good storyteller. Um, uh, uh, campfires and, and stuff like that. Um, and he was also really good with kids. Okay. Not in a crazy way. Um, but he was good talking with kids. Uh, it was actually in Boy Scout stuff uh, way back when. But um, I think I was more, I'm more of a teacher than a historian. Mm -hmm. um, so I enjoy just telling stories. It really doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. But history is such a rich fabric of stories. It's like, you know, there's just so much shit that's out mm -hmm. that it's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a cupboard. It's like a cabinet. And I can just go in and I can grab whatever I want. And I can, I can tell that story to get kids excited um, about the world that they live in, you know, or angry or passionate or hateful or um, knowledgeable. So, you know, you have a reservoir to dip from. Do you, uh, do you ever feel like, uh, I don't want to say like pushing, but do you ever... Uh I guess maybe, I, 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 don't, I don't even want to use it because it would almost kind of make you seem like a, uh, like a stage mom or, or a stage dad, but could, could, could you see your children getting into teaching and would that no, be something that you would want to I, No, I don't go there. I, I really don't go there. I think that people need to become the people they're going to be. Okay. Um, so I've never been like that. I just encourage their passions when they're passionate about something. Gotcha. Um, you know, I want to avoid that trap because I think that if we do that, we might be limiting their possibilities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think that. Yeah, they're roller derby queens right now. Yes. So. My wife is the founder of the Queen City Roller Girls. Right. Oh, so, man. Yeah. I remember the, uh, uh, you used to, uh, I want to say, um, man, what were we watching? I don't know if they were watching. I, I definitely want to say that we were watching tapes. But I remember, because uh, you used to take the games. Yeah, yeah, I did a video for him yeah. for years. Yeah. I stopped last year, but 
Yeah, yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah. I used to look at it like, man, this is the only stuff that I was seeing on Sprite TV. You know, it was always so weird to me to see you know actually being involved that I definitely think that's kind of cool. Now outside of teaching here, any event that uh, that you would have never been teaching? Right. Do you, uh, do, do you see or, or maybe that you would have had a different uh, a different career path? Lumberjack. To be a lumberjack. No. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be, I think I'd be, I think I'd be a terrible politician. Mm-hmm. Um, I like political science because it's such a, like a, a dirty game. No, just knowing about it. Want to be a liar? Is that yeah, I'm yeah, doing? yeah. I watch House of Cards. I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I think a lawyer. I don't know. I think that you know I'm pretty good at persuading things and talking about stuff. Gotcha. I don't know. I think I was supposed to be a teacher for now. So, mm-hmm. and I think that we're supposed to be whatever we are for the time we are it. Oh, so yeah. we're something different. Yes, I like that. <laughs> I like that. Now, was, was, this, was it always a feeling in you? You know, within you. Uh, from from childhood to you know high school college all the way through that you would be helping people in in, in some manner. You know? uh, I could say yes, but that would be kind of bullshitty. I don't know what the hell I was doing as a kid. Right, right. I was just trying to get through. Yeah. I was just trying to get my ass kicked. Yeah. That's pretty much my childhood. <laughs> like if I can get through and not get my ass kicked today, it's a good day. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I really I don't. I don't know, maybe there's kids like that and like passion and they know what they're gonna be. No, I I, I was kind of. Kind of a dumb kid. I got it. Said stupid stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the that's the that's the best way. No, no, right, right. But that's I think that you know, yeah, I take him as a come, have fun, have a good day. So no, I'm not gonna lie to you. I didn't even know when I went to college what I wanted to do. Right. I think I had seven majors. Cool, look at that. I was gonna be criminal justice. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm the worst cop ever. Right. right. <laughs> They'd arrest me for being a bad cop. Yeah. Uh, criminalistics, and I'm like, I gotta take chemistry. Yeah. I can't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I went through the. That was a history major. I'm like, what the hell are you gonna do with a history degree? Right. <laughs> so you go to chemistry. Yeah. Right. And history. <laughs> now, um. Musical. Um, I'm kind of weird. I'm eclectic. I listen to whatever people want me to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably not as hip as I used to be in terms of more modern music, but uh, Hughes. Yeah, that's just my marketing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean it's a little corny, but uh, I like folk music mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I like like older hip hop, like like Public Enemy kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. social rap, right, uh, right. jazz. I think jazz is pretty cool. Okay. I, you'll hear me listen to classical, country rock, a uh, little bit of everything, mm-hmm. um, except for polka music. I hate polka music. Polka, 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 polka. Anytime I think about polka, <laughs> I think of, uh, I think of John Candy, and I think about uh, the first Home Alone. But then whenever yeah, I think yeah, about right. <laughs> I immediately think of, uh, I think about The Great Outdoors right when after I think about it. That's one of my favorite movies ever. I, I will say this. I like music that matters. Yes. I like music that matters. So if it matters, if they're singing about or rapping about something or telling a story um, that's important, that has a message, good, bad, or ugly, I like that. So if, you know, if it's a story, if the song's about you know big bucks and stuff like that, I'll take a pass. Okay. Yeah. No cheap key for you. Uh, probably not. <laughs> No cheap I key. have a cheap key tattoo, but I'm not going to show you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to see. Right here, the big ass. <laughs> got an ass on my shoulder. Yes. And it says, Chief Keith. <laughs> Three run Shy rat. <laughs> you know, I'm just laughing like I get it. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You know, let me ask you this, though. When you see, you know, when you, do, when you come across the kids and, you know, that's... That's what they're into, you know, the, the, the culture and the other side of the culture. It's know, always culture. been like that. There's always that kind of music all across the culture. Right. There's always been that kind of genre, whether it's now or, I mean, when I was in school, I'll date myself in the 80s and stuff. Mm-hmm. There was, like, my friends were listening to bands like Cinderella. Mm-hmm. They had this guy with, like, girl's hair, mm-hmm. like, all the way out. What stupid shit's that? Right, right. Yeah. But... It is what it is. It's, it's part of culture, and I accept that, and that's cool. And as long as people treat people kindly, I don't care what you listen to. I do. Yeah. I do, and this might make me unpopular, but I am a little tired of the boys' asses. Yep. Just a little bit, because they're right there in front of my room. So right. when you got your pants pulled down, and I, you know, whatever, pull the power to you, but when you bend over in your locker, that's not cool. He was sorry. against it back in like 0102 oh. when we were in AP government. Oh. So. I mean, I understand. I'm trying to be cool. I get it a little bit, I guess. I'm still tired. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, 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 to just go with that. I mean, I still, you know, to this day, you catch me, you know, with, 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 you won't catch me outside with my pants down, you know. And I do, I do understand at least where it's coming from to a, to to a certain extent. But again, you know, with uh, with me being older, you know, with me being in more professional settings than I was in ten years ago, with me having children, you know, you definitely get tired of it. Definitely. Well, it's got them all over. Yeah. See, it used to be like you used like to be here. Now here. Like, here. like down by the ankles. <laughs> you know, like like walking like this guy out of the bathroom. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, but, God forbid. But, but I'm not good marks. Yeah. But I'm not gonna be cranky old man. Yes. So, yeah. No. It's not cranky at all. It's all good. Look like you're not a day above 25. What's that? 26. Oh, well, see, there you go. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I know we can go on forever. Yeah. Anything, yeah, uh, anything else that we just uh, might have missed that you uh, want to touch on any events, anything new going on, maybe that they can uh, check out, or just uh, anything that you want to give to the people that we probably didn't. I'll give you my stupid slogan, and we'll call it a night. Okay. Right? In the phraseology. Where tension goes, energy flows. Yes. And uh, I do believe that with all my heart, that wherever your focus is in this world, uh, that's where you're going, baby. Yes. So make sure that your focus is uh, is well thought out. How about that? I did that. Make sure your focus is well thought out. Sheesh. Yeah. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> this is Station.com. That's the great Keith Hughes. Yes, that's fun. Uh, who, uh, somebody was just, um, uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump and somebody else. Asshole. Asshole. <laughs> 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 well, what happens if he buys the bills? <laughs> Local asshole. Hustlestation.com <laughs> 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 people, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you again. <laughs>